Despite months of delays, Deathloop is starting to look like one of the most exciting, inventive, and stylish releases of 2021. But what will the game actually play like? Hi, this is Alistair from Clocked, and we recently had the chance to speak to game director Dinga Bakaba and art director Sebastian Mitton. We managed to uncover a score of new information about the music, mechanics, and mayhem you can expect to find in Deathloop. So let's dive right in, shall we? Here are the top five things we learned about Deathloop. First of all, who the hell is this Juliana we've been hearing so much about? Juliana will be an antagonistic force felt throughout the game, from story beats to her literally hunting the player down to ruin their run. The best part? Sometimes another player may jump into Juliana's shoes. That's right, Deathloop has an invasion mechanic. Playing as Juliana will have a few advantages, namely being home, meaning that NPCs and other inhabitants won't attack you. So the best invaders will be those who've already mastered the island. Killing Juliana as cult will earn you resources to spend on permanent upgrades, whereas killing versions of cult as Juliana will earn players upgrades specific to Juliana. This in vanity items such as new outfits. Arcane chose to gate the unlocking of cosmetics behind Juliana on the basis that if you care about how you look in a first person game, it's probably because you like playing with others, which makes a lot of sense. We also learned that Deathloop will be split into four areas, the Complex, Updam, Fristad Rock, and Carl's Bay, as well as four time zones, morning, noon, afternoon, and evening. This 4x4 grid of times and locales serves as the basis of the game's central time loop, creating a roguelike experience of sorts. That said, you'll be relieved to hear that you can also save your progress between runs, rescuing you from particularly lengthy playthroughs like we've seen in Returnal. With the day split into four, you can take a breather between time periods or mission areas once you've completed your objectives. As anyone who has seen the previous previews will tell you, Deathloop is stylish as hell. This extends into the soundtrack, where Tom Salter of Halo and Wolfenstein fame teams up with Ross Tregenza, the man behind Crisis and Cyberpunk 2077. There are also original songs that exist specifically within the world of Deathloop, which will be featured through radios or other in-game objects or characters. A prominent example of this is Frank Spicer, one of your ultimate hit targets, the Visionaries. The Kaba describes Spicer as a mix of a folk singer and a crooner, and he has several songs in the game. So there'll be plenty of motivation for putting an end to his painful yodeling by the time you get to him. And finally, some nitty gritty game details. In Deathloop, despite losing progress with each death, there are many ways for players to upgrade their character to be faster, deadlier, quieter, or more powerful. These upgrades come down to weapons, supernatural powers granted by mysterious slabs, and trinkets that can alter how your character, weapons, or slab powers behave. However, Residum is an item players will unlock in the main campaign, which allows them to maintain certain upgrades permanently. Love that particular slab power? It's yours for life, if you've got the Residum to pay for it. So as we can see, Deathloop is looking to take the most exhilarating elements of roguelike games and soften them just a tad to make the gameplay a little more palatable to newcomers. Considering how it's all looking so far, we don't think anyone will mind. Thanks for watching. This has been Alistair for Clocked. Feel free to hit the subscribe button and stay up to date with all things Deathloop.